Hey guys, how are you going? My name's Sam from Core Electronics and today we're going to take a look at how you can build a RetroPie gaming console, which is really cool. It's one of the funnest things you can do with your RetroPie, in my opinion, of course, maybe bashing your head against uh, the terminal is preferable, but I think vintage gaming is very cool. So what is RetroPie? What is it we keep talking about? Well, RetroPie is an operating system designed to run on the Raspberry Pi, and it contains a whole bunch of different emulators for all of the vintage consoles from Sega to now uh, the original Nintendo Entertainment System, Super Nintendo Entertainment System, Nintendo 64, I love Nintendo, uh, but heaps of different other ones, Dreamcast, etc, etc, uh, which is very, very cool. Now, we've already got a tutorial called Gaming Kit for RetroPie, uh, which looks at the software configuration for for RetroPie, how to configure a controller, how to put ROMs on, how to get it, uh, get it up and running for the very first time. But today we're going to be taking a look at what you need to actually build it, all the different stuff. Now of course we've got a gaming kit for RetroPie specifically for this, which comes with everything you need, including two controllers for those epic multiplayer battles. But how do we go connecting it all up? It can be a bit confusing if you've only just got your RetroPie and you're not really sure, or sorry, your Raspberry Pi. I should say, and you're not really sure what to do. So, what do we need? Well, first up, you guessed it, we need a Raspberry Pi. Now, I've actually got my Raspberry Pi in this nifty, nifty little case here, uh, which is the last thing I put down that you'll need. But I've got it in here because I've got a, a heatsink and a fan in there as well, which you don't need at all, not strictly necessary. But if you take a look at our optimizing RetroPi tutorial, you'll notice that with a bit of overclocking, you might want to keep your Raspberry Pi cool. Not not uh, strictly necessary at all, but you need the Raspberry Pi board. Go on, go on here. See that? Yep. Cool. All right. You've got your board. Now, that's fantastic. Good on you. But a board isn't much good unless you can power it up. So you need a power supply. Now, what I've got here, and I recommend to everyone, oh, got a bit of a tangle. Give me a moment. Here's the official Raspberry Pi power supply. This one's white. There are also black ones. Very good. They come with a micro USB connector. Nectar, fantastic. And they are a really high quality 5 volt 2.5 amp power supply. Now that's important because the new Raspberry Pi 3, well, new, compared to the Raspberry Pi 2, uh, has a, you know, some really great new performance bumps. But along with that comes an increase in power, and especially if you're using external gaming controllers and all the rest via the USB ports, then you're going to need that extra current. So pick yourself up one of those. Or we're also going to take a look at how you can build a portable gaming console, which is cool. I hope to have a specific project up on that soon. But uh, if you want to do that, just grab yourself a USB power supply. One of the ones you use to charge your phone. It's very cool. We've got one on our store. Now, anything above about 6,000 milliamp hours will give you a couple of hours of life. You know, assuming average current draw, say one and a half amps for the Pi something around that, perhaps even less. Uh, then if you put a uh, portable display on, I think it's around half an amp for that guy. So maybe two, three hours. But the one I recommend is on our store, I've linked it in the article there. Uh, it's a USB power bank and it has a 10,000 milliamp hour capacity. It's awesome uh, and it has two USB ports. The important thing is make sure it has a two amp output. Otherwise your system isn't gonna get enough amps, not enough power. Cool, cool, power supplies. Now, all well and good, you've got your Pi turned on, but it does nothing. That's because the operating system is all on the micro SD card. So I've got one here, comes with a very fancy black full-size USB adapter. Pull it out and you get the micro SD card, which goes into the micro SD card slot of your Raspberry Pi. Just there, don't mind the big copper heatsink on the memory bus, uh, which goes in like that. You will need one of those. Now, we've got them pre-loaded with RetroPie. They come pre-installed with, uh, well, sorry, pre-loaded with RetroPie uh, with our gaming kits. But if you already have one lying around, there's a link there. There's a link there where you can download the image and use uh, WinDisk32 or another similar imaging tool to pop it onto a card, which is cool. Now, now you can power it up and you can see it on your uh, screen. Oh, I didn't mention screen. We'll get to that in a moment. Never fear. You can see it on your hypothetical screen. But you're going to need a controller. You're going to need something to control it, to do something with. Otherwise, it's a very boring experience. So I recommend our NES or SNES style USB gaming controllers. They're super cheap. They're pretty durable, really reliable bits of gear. Uh, you can pick up, you know, pick up a handful of those and have some friends around for a multiplayer gaming system. Very, very cool. Or alternatively, we have 8-bit do controllers. There's one here. We've just got these in. Look at it. It's a Bluetooth 64 controller. We just got these into the warehouse this morning. I'm very, very excited about that. Or otherwise, we've got a, uh, a SNES style 
wireless controller, wireless Bluetooth, vintage gaming with no annoying cords where you're sitting in front of the screen like this. It's very, very cool. Pick up, uh, pick up one of those, or you can also use a keyboard to play as well and just map the different keys, but you're gonna need a controller. Um, then next up, as we alluded to before, you need a screen. I've got myself here just a standard old uh, HDMI computer monitor. Uh, nothing special, but it works just fine. Any display with a HDMI port will work really, really well. TV, computer monitor, uh, anything like that. Now you can also use a composite video display, but I really don't recommend it. It doesn't give you a great um, output. Now some of the games you might be playing were, you know, were originally designed for composite video, so you say, oh, why do I need HDMI anyway? That's because the whole RetroPie operating system is designed, operating, operating system is designed to run with a HDMI output. Everything looks fuzzy and awful. You're not gonna have a good time. You are not going to have a good time. Get a HDMI display, super, super awesome. Now, as I was saying, we can also create a portable gaming console, project coming soon, uh, and you can use the official seven inch Raspberry Pi touchscreen, which is really cool. We don't specifically need the touchscreen, but you could map with a bit of a bit of a software hack, map some of the points on that screen to controls, which is really cool. Otherwise, it still makes for a great screen. You mount the Raspberry Pi on the back, got a really compact setup. There's more about setting up that uh, portable display in the screens and displays tutorial for Raspberry Pi, which is very cool. And last thing, not super necessary, but a case. A case keeps your Raspberry Pi safe from knocks, accidental drops, and all those other nasty things. It also protects your GPIO pins, make sure your board doesn't get accidentally fried or you know, suffer static damage, and it looks sweet. Also, it allows you to put a fan or heat sinks for overclocking, different things like that. But that is all you need, all you need. Again, gaming kit, everything but a screen, that's what you want. Uh, so, how do we set it up for the first time? Well, we take our micro SD card, put it into your micro SD card slot, like so, Done. Now connect up your HDMI cable into the HDMI port, just uh, just there. Cool, cool. Oh, cover out. Mario Bros. Sorry, Super Mario Bros. Fantastic. Now attach a keyboard or gaming device. Any of the USB ports will work just fine. Now you could also uh, attach an ethernet cable if you wanted internet, but bear in mind the Pi 3 has built in Wi-Fi as, as well as Bluetooth. Uh, so you can go into the RetroPie settings and configure Wi-Fi as well, so not really necessary. You've got your gaming controller. Now let's attach some power. Take your micro USB cable, connect it up. Yeah. And you see the magical red light appear. Can you see it? Yep, very faintly, just there. Cool, cool. And then you'll see everything, it boots up, RetroPie, you get the RetroPie splash screen, which is really, really cool and fun times are ahead. So that's all there is to it guys, really simple to build your own retro gaming console. Now of course there's so much more to this that you could take. Uh, I'd love to see a really sweet enclosure, you know, custom built enclosure for this that houses everything together. As I said, I'm gonna have a project up really soon for a portable console, which will be fun, check that out. Um, otherwise, post in the comments below your RetroPie setup, how you're liking it. Um, that's all for now, guys. It's gonna boot up into the best vintage gaming experience of your life. Well, okay, I think it's the best vintage gaming experience of your life. Take it with a grain of salt, but check it out for yourself uh, and take a look at some of our more awesome RetroPie tutorials. See you guys.